Hi, welcome to Avcam's webinar today. Today's principal speaker is Dr. Stephen Tate from Cancer Research UK, Beetson Institute and University of Glasgow. Stephen carried out his graduate studies at the Institute for Animal Health in Purbright, UK. This was where he investigated viral immune evasion strategies. His postdoc training was carried out at the Netherlands Cancer Institute in Amsterdam and at St. Jude Children's Research Hospital, Memphis. Since 2012, Stephen has had his own research group based at the Cancer Research UK, Beetson Institute and the University of Glasgow. His group is supported, in part, by a fellowship from the Royal Society. His lab's main research interest is investigating deregulation of mitochondrial functions in cancer, focusing upon cell death and autophagy. Joining Stephen today will be David Bruce, Research Area Content Associate from ABCAM. David has a BSc in Biomedical Sciences Pharmacology from the University of Aberdeen. Before joining ABCAM, David studied for his PhD at the University of Dundee, where he examined the regulation of the TGF beta signaling pathway by novel protein phosphatases and ubiquitin E3 ligases. I will now hand over to Stephen, who will start this webinar. Stephen? Thanks very much, Lucy. Um, okay, and thanks for the introduction. Right, so today I'm really going to talk about the mitochondrial pathways of cell death and how to investigate these processes. And I'm really going to divide my talk into three separate sections. One is going to be discussing the mitochondrial or intrinsic pathway of apoptosis, its mechanism, its dysfunction and disease, and really outline a couple of outstanding questions that um, remain in the field. From that, I'm going to go on to discuss at least some methods that can use for detecting mitochondrial dependent apoptosis in the system that you're investigating. And finally, I'm going to um, kind of showcase a new approach that we've developed to determine mitochondrial function um, in non apoptotic cell death. Okay, so first, I'm going to talk about apoptosis. Apoptotic cell death requires activation of proteases called caspases, which bring about the rapid demise of a cell. And effectively, there are two different pathways, or two main pathways, whereby caspases can be activated. One is called the extrinsic pathway of apoptosis, and this typically is activated by death receptor ligands. These bind to a receptor, which in turn clusters and activates caspase 8. Active caspase 8 goes ahead and then cleaves caspase 3 and 7, bringing about rapid cell death. I'm not really going to talk much about the extrinsic pathway of apoptosis. Today, we're going to focus on the intrinsic pathway of apoptosis, also known as the mitochondrial pathway of apoptosis, which is activated by one of numerous uh, stresses, such as DNA damage or ER stress. This leads to activation of BH3-only proteins, that in turn activate two proteins in the process, BACs and BAC. We'll discuss this in much more detail, but these proteins, when they're activated, lead to mitochondrial outer membrane permeabilization. This then, in turn, activates caspases through the release of proteins such as cytochrome C or SMAC and OMI from the mitochondria. These then drive caspase activation in the case of cytochrome C. SMAC and OMI, on the other hand, inhibit um, a caspase inhibitor called XIP. And the net effect is once mitochondrial permeabilization has occurred, also known as MOMP, I'll refer to it as MOMP through the talk as well, um, the cell dies within a matter of minutes to a couple of hours. So really just emphasizing the mitochondrial pathway of apoptosis. In healthy cells, mitochondria retain various proteins in their mitochondrial intermembrane space such as cytochrome C, SMAC, and OMI, when these proteins are released, they actively kill the cell. And so in the one sense, mitochondria can be considered uh, similar to suicide capsules. When a cell receives a trigger to die, that activates BH3-only protein. Um, one of these is TBID. These, in turn, activate BACs and BAC. And somehow, when BACs and BAC are activated, they selectively permeabilize the mitochondrial outer membrane mitochondrial outer membrane permeabilization. This has catastrophic consequences for the cell. 
as mentioned previously, cytochrome C binds this adapter molecule APAF. That in turn activates caspases. They cleave hundreds of different proteins, bringing about rapid apoptotic cell death. And as mentioned, SMAC and OMI inhibit this caspase inhibitor XIEP. And so the net effect is you get rapid, robust caspase activation and rapid cell death. Okay, and so we can image this, this whole process um, by confocal microscopy. And this is shown here. And what you're going to see in this movie um, are the mitochondria being labeled red with a fluorescent fusion protein SMAC M cherry. They're also expressing um, YFP backs, which is predominantly cytosolic in healthy cells. Now, as the cell dies, the cell looks perfectly healthy up until the point the mitochondrial permeabilization occurs. And at that point, SMAC M cherry is released throughout the cell. You'll see it go from this punctate pattern to diffuse pattern. And at the same time, my BAX translocates onto the mitochondria. So it moves onto the mitochondria. Um, it goes from this diffuse pattern to punctate pattern. Once mitochondrial permeabilization has occurred, this engages rapid and robust caspase activity that leads to the hallmarks of apoptosis, and you can see that quite nicely in these cells. The cells shrink, the nucleus condenses, and finally, the cells expose phosphatidylserine. And this can be detected because we've added um, an exon 5, which is conjugated to APC, um, and it binds phosphatidylserine as it's flipped from the inner to the outer leaflet of the plasma membrane. And so I'll play this movie through a couple of times just really to emphasize this point, the mitochondrial permeabilization is the key event in the mitochondrial pathway of apoptosis. Eventually these cells, as I say, um, expose phosphatidylserine. And in our bodies, these cells are rapidly removed by neighboring phagocytes. So again, at that point, we get massive caspase activation, the cells shrink, membranes bleb, the nucleus condenses, and we get uh, phosphatidylserine exposure. <laughs> 